Hey everybody, uh, Bert here. Um, got a Volkswagen powered uh, Fokker D7. For those of you that have followed me for any length of time, you know that uh, that I have had more than my fair share of engine temperature problems, oil temperature problems, uh, which led to oil pressure problems. And uh, I went through so many different um, uh, things. Uh, now I'm in an awesome place, and so I figured I would uh, make a little video uh, that might uh, help some of you guys. Unlike some of the new ports that have a great big round opening, or, or some of those, those planes, some of other Robert's planes, um, they have a big huge round opening. And the D7 is at a disadvantage because it's got uh, just the, the, the nature of the cowl. But uh, this is my uh, Falker D7. It's uh, got a 2332cc uh, Valley Engineering with a two to one uh, redrive. And so uh, here's just, uh, in the military we've got a saying, how do you know where you're going unless you know where you are or where you've been. And so uh, I figured I would cap capture some of the, the things that I did and uh, who knows, maybe uh, you'll find them uh, of use. Uh, so, so let me tell you where I am right now. Um, where I am right now is is I can go fly for as, as, long, as long as I want. Uh, oil temps might get to 190. Um, cylinder head temps right now, the other night I flew, it was 60 degrees out, and um, uh, my cylinder head temps were 305 to 325, and that's much better than the 400, and the, uh, for, for those of you, I used to be able to fly one time around the pattern and my oil would go to 230 and then infinity and then my pressure would just drop, you know, and that's, that's the dangerous, uh, uh, I'm getting ready to seize uh, engine, so. Okay, so right here, uh, what I did was I've got one upper plenum and, um, and I've got kind of a false firewall about about right here that you'll see in a minute. So just a couple things to see on the outside here. Uh, I saw a lot of stuff that said if your valve covers are black, they'll shed heat even better. I used to have chrome on here and I went to black and uh, so there you go. Down here, I used to have Robert's uh, one inch lip right there and have the whole bottom open and uh, what was happening is the prop blast was coming here and see the air was just sealing off and the hot air was not able to uh, escape. And so what I ended up doing was uh, carrying this thing back by one inch and I, I put a manometer in the top and in the bottom and we did a pressure differential. And what we found was about uh, two thirds of the way through was about the magical distance to where you'd get the max pressure differential between the upper and the lower and uh, anything further than that there was no difference so uh, uh, there you go the other thing that you can see on the outside here is originally I had tried just the uh, one inch lip up here I had tried a one inch lip down there and uh, Rick Bennett uh, gave me a recommendation he said uh, you know none of that had worked this right here is three inches and oh by the way it is about 45 degrees and it what it allows the air to do is to go down and instead of just being hitting a 90 degree blade and being in turbulence it allows the air to hit that and deflect down and create a low pressure kind of vortex area right there um, now let's talk about inlet versus uh, outlet the easy way to determine the inlet area was just to make a, just a bunch of rectangles and length times width. And I did all that and I did the math and I measured how much my inlet area was versus how much my outlet area was. And one thing that you don't know is the size of these and the effect of these, they will disrupt the air to keep it from being clean. And, but you just don't know. And if, if I measure those at a 16th of an inch and I, and I measure all, did all the math, I calculated how much less area this was here. So what I ended up going for was I was trying to shoot for 
two to one or one to two for so double the the outlet area than I had for the 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 inlet. Um, these right here, I'm just doing fiberglass work. That's gonna that's gonna be repaired here uh, soon. But uh, uh, I had I had done this and I had and I brought this exit area uh, instead of back here. I brought it here, so I've got a big huge opening with this. Okay, I did the math there. Right now, I'm, I'm close to two to one inlet to outlet. Uh, I was close to it. Now, you can't just even make it bigger than that or there'll be no pressure. One thing I tried about a little over a month ago was to just open this up just as an experiment. At the time, I was getting about... Uh, 360 to 380 on cylinder head temps and probably 220 and uh, simply opening this up I first experimented with two inches and did just a straight open thing so I've got cool air coming in here and you can just see it's just hitting right in there okay and uh, that right there dropped my uh, cylinder head temps from about 370 to 330 and so then I opened this up one more inch and that even brought it down more so to summarize here before I take the cowl off um, you kind of generally need to know number one what your inlet area is versus your outlet area I experimented with this clean hole and that really helped and then as far as down here uh, have a 45 degree deflection minus three inches that uh, that piece of aluminum is three inches there and uh, And so and I've got the I've got the big hole here And I see that piece of exhaust tubing. Okay, so that's a little summary of what you see uh, on the outside now, let me take the cowl off and uh, Let me take the cowl off and do the uh, inside there's one thing i forgot to mention before i tear this apart is uh initially i uh had horrible temps and pressures and there was two things that i didn't know at the time when i got this engine from valley you you don't know it unless you build it but i got no building sheet or no nothing with the my compression was set at 10 to 1, and uh, that's crazy. Uh, the manuals that I've seen recommend 7 to 1, and I found that the, uh, the, the hopped up, souped up Baja bugs might go to 8, but 10 to 1? No wonder I was having crazy temps. Um, and that's just, and you don't, you won't know your, your, uh, your, your you won't know your uh, compression uh, until you take a cylinder head off and actually measure the fluid volume in the head and then measure your deck height There's a there's a formula that you use in, in the manual Anyway, I didn't know it until I had done an autopsy on my engine At last resort pulling that thing off my cylinder head and I found all four of my cylinders were set at 10 to 1 No wonder so you just buy a little shim and you can put either one on the inside or one on the outside and you shim it up it, there's a there's a calculation you do pretty easy if i can do it you can do it so set my compression from 10 to 1 to 7 to 1 made a, a big difference the other thing that how would you ever know it but uh early on when i was having all these temperature problems and high my my cylinder head temps would go into the red before one time around the pattern once I got my cylinder head temps under control, then my, my oil, by the second time around the pattern, my oil would go to 230, 240, 250, and it would just keep going up, and then the pressure would go down, and so I would have to land. One thing we found was, there's called a it's oil control valve, pressure relief valve, pressure control valve. There's a lot of different words for it, but there's two of them on your engine. The one on the front, which was the pulley side, for me, that
that one can that one is the one that determines based on the pressure inside how much oil gets routed to the cooler what I in it all it is is it's a little spring about an inch and a half long and there's a little small about the thickness of a first grade pencil and it's like half an inch long anyway it sits on top of a spring and it's supposed to be free floating and when the it, it, and it determines based on the temperature pressure of your, your your engine when to direct oil to the cooler well it's supposed to be freely floating mine wasn't mine was stuck in the 70 percent open position and what that means is on the ground even when it's not needed 70 percent of the oil is going to the cooler when not required but worse at cruise up in the pattern I'm only getting 70% when I need 100%. How would you ever know that? Well, there's a list of, if you've got high oil temps, there's a list of 15 things you check. And uh, when we pulled the bolt off the front of the engine, uh, the, the, the little Allen screw, and we saw, well, there was a metal shard that was stuck in there, and the piston, the little piston on the oil pressure relief valve, it was stuck in the open position. What a pain to have to check that out. But uh, if you're not getting the right oil temperature you need, uh, that's one of the things that you would need to check is that your pressure control valve, oil control valve, whatever you're gonna call that one in the front, that you make sure that that is free floating. Because you can actually shim it, uh, and I've actually done that, to make sure that oil goes, uh, just by shimming, I put a little small washer in there. I can probably take it out now that I've, um, my temperatures are, are very under control. But anyway, those two things were part of my initial problem. Compression at 10 to one, and you know, that, 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 ch that chunk of metal that was keeping the piston from being free floating, that could have been in there from the very first moments that the engine was run and that I got it from Valley. They would have never known because it's running and sending oil to the cooler and uh, you know how would you ever know that? Well once you go to take your engine apart and I actually had to pull a cylinder head temp, sit pull a cylinder head and uh, check the deck height which is the space from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder. You check that and you measure the fluid volume. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because my initial two problems was high compression and oil, not all the oil, going to the uh, routed to the cooler. Okay, uh, now that I've got it off, uh, I wanted to mention here, my tech counselor when I first started having all these problems, he was like, uh, physics is physics, air molecules are air molecules, there's no difference between Lycoming Continental and Volkswagen, aside from the small oil galley, galleys. Anyway, uh, I elected, if you know, if those of you that know Daryl Porter, he's got three chambers, uh, one for one cylinder, one for the other, one for, in the middle for oil cooler and uh, uh, carburetor air filter. I chose to go one upper plenum at the time. And when I stick the uh, camera in here, I want you to notice I've got baffling sealed everything. I mean, so I've got baffling uh, and RTV. So let's see if, like, if you can see in here. So I've got baffling going all up there. So there really is no place for the air to go. Okay, let's see. I don't know if this is very good. Okay. But one thing to note here is I have an 11 by 7 giant uh, oil cooler here. Originally, this had a smaller oil cooler, and when I got it from Valley, they had put this larger one on there. 2332, Biden's very nature, is going to generate a lot more heat. But you can see here, I got the upper upper plenum. Um, these are made of high, uh, of the high temp fiberglass. They wrap around. Originally, I had just had one that they, they just went here to the midway point and had cooling tins on the bottom. On the underside of right in here, there is a little, there's a little fin. I'll show you here in a second. But one thing I wanted to point here is this is a giant upper plenum. 
Uh, everything is sealed and I have a giant oil cooler. Okay, on the side here, you can see one of my newer additions is this sump. And pay no attention to that, uh, um, that the exhaust wrap. I'm getting ready to take that thing off. That's just been a pain. It didn't even work anyway. I originally didn't have this external sump, but uh, Daryl Porter and Mark Lewis had recommended when I was initially searching for uh, solutions that uh, the extra oil could actually only help. So there you go. Uh, I got that on there. Um, let's see. You can see here's kind of my false firewood and my upper plenum. You can see. Um, anyway, I wanted to point out the, uh, the oil cooler. Now, one of the things, let's see, let me come around here. Oh, let's see. That, uh, right now I'm measuring my oil from right here, but th this, the pressure control valve that I mentioned is right up above this. And the reason that I'm not measuring the oil from back there where I used to is because I've got an adjustable, uh, I've got an adjustable thing back there that really isn't making a difference. But right there is where your pressure relief valve is and there's a spring with a piston and you can get to it by pulling it out, it should drop out. Um, so there you go. Okay, the, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was yeah, the, the kind of oil. There's so much on the internet about um, the kinds of oil you should and shouldn't use. Should you just use, they were originally designed for 30 weight, use 30 weight, and that was before multi-grade oils. And uh, the, I can only tell you now what, uh, what works for me. Originally, I started with Castrol 1040 because that's what Valley had recommended. And, um, but my pressure kept getting low, but I had high cylinder head temps and I had oil high, high oil temps. And so I knew that if I, I had better success with the thicker grade oil, um, a lot of people say semi-synthetic, others say no synthetic. I know for a fact that you can't use uh, Avgas with synthetic oil, not that I use Avgas, but in case I ever had to, I didn't want to have synthetic in there. I tried Brad Penn semi-synthetic, Castrol, I tried every kind of oil out there. And one thing I consistently saw, and I saw from the, the, the it's interesting that the Aero V manual, which is a little bit more modern than the Great Plains Steve Bennett manual. Uh, they recommend like these two 2050 weight oils. One's Brad, Brad Penn, which is almost impossible to get non-semi-synthetic. Uh, non but the other one is this Valvoline VR1 racing oil, um, specialized for flat tappet engines, uh, 2050 weight oil. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I get it at AutoZone, and I used it to, to break in, and it is 2050. It doesn't get too cold here in Alabama, but, you know, in January when maybe it's in its the 30s or 40s, I might switch to maybe 1040 or something like that. But one thing I found when I switched to this oil is it really seemed to keep my pressure uh, in a much better place. And, and now... When I start the engine, it, it's like 90 PSI, and then by the time I'm at the end of the runway, I'm at 75, and then by the time I'm on climb out, it's, it's 65, and then uh, when I'm at pattern altitude, getting ready to leave the pattern, um, I'm about 55, and it seems to want to stay right around 50, and, um, uh, between 50 and 55. Occasionally, if it's if it's warm out, it might get in the high 40s. But uh, I, I, and that's at 3,000 RPMs. So for for this engine for me, I get 3,600 max RPMs. And I just decided since there's no trim tab or anything, to set my uh, between 2,800 and 3,200 is a is a good place for cruise. So I just picked 3,000. I said I'm going to trim my plane and set it up where when I'm just flying around. I go to 3,000 and, and that's it, unless I'm doing something. Anyway, 
so again, my cylinder head temps at 3,000 RPMs flying for an hour or an hour and a half. Cylinder head temps the other night when I flew was 305 to 325 on a 60 degree night and, and my oil pressure stayed right, right around 50. Uh, and that's at cruise RPMs. I mean, obviously when I pull back and I'm taxiing back at just above idle, it's at like 15, something like that. But uh, uh, this, this oil's been, been good for me and I'm gonna stick with it. So. Okay, so to summarize, uh, just a couple thoughts here is uh, my initial problems were uh, high compression and a, and a stuck oil pressure relief valve. Once I figured that, uh, I still had high oil temps and pressures. And this is not even where I'm admitting that, that I put the number two piston ring when I re had rebuilt the engine. I had my number two piston ring upside down. And, and the, the, the number two piston ring has a little shoulder on it. And if you have it upside down, it won't properly give you compression and it won't properly, you'll get blow by and blow by is essentially um, gas, oil, water mixture that is combustible. It's 1,000 or 1,200 degrees. So 1,200 degree blow by fluid going into your 200 degree oil. No wonder. Uh, so I had an upside down piston ring and, and blow by, uh, but I'm not even admitting that I did that. But anyway, once I had the two problems fixed, I still had high uh, oil temps and high pressures. Make sure you're, whether you do three upper plenum uh, or one big one like I did, make sure everything is sealed very good so that no air can get anywhere else. Um, uh, I happen to have some like high temperature uh, fiberglass, the, uh, the cooling tins instead of just the cooling tins on the bottom. Mine, I had a guy make them and they went all the way around. But uh, so let's see, get a large oil cooler. Um, I currently have an adjustable oil pressure thing. I might just take that thing out. Um, but I dialed it in to give me a little bit of pressure. It's funny, you can dial it in half a turn and your oil pressure will go uh, in cruise from like, you know, 30 to 60. You can, you can dial it in, it just, it's, an, it's a shim and the, pushes it up. So, um, uh, 2050 oil, uh, the external sump, um, the, uh, make sure you know your inlet to outlet air area and uh, put that flange on the bottom and don't just go straight down go at a 45 degree angle so the air can hit it and create a and I think that's probably about it uh, oh and that the 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 bottom right there that egg that that little hole right there that allowed clean air to come in I was I was probably at about 360 on cylinder head temps and 215 on oil temps and when I opened that up right there that got me down to 320 in my oil to about 190 so um, anyway maybe you'll find that helpful use black for your valve covers I think that's about it hopefully I didn't forget anything good luck